Welcome back guys, so this is going to be a beginner's guide video to SEMU VU emulator for Windows I'll be showing you how to set up the emulator on my PC that has Ryzen 3700X processor and an RTX 2070 Super GPU We'll also be showing you some gameplays of Bayonetta Part 2 and Super Mario Maker The emulator just recently went open source We'll be trying out its first open source build that is version 2 This is its website Here system requirements have been mentioned quite modest. In its current stage, the emulator can already be considered as optimized. It still receives update. For CMU, the single core performance of a CPU is the most important factor for full speed emulation. Just to let you know, even if you have a high end system, you won't be able to emulate every Wii U game at full speed. This is emulation after all. They have provided a compatibility list. You can also refer to the games wiki page in order to obtain the optimized settings fixes for certain bugs. NVIDIA GPUs are recommended. If you have an AMD GPU, avoid OpenGL due to bad performance. Intel iGPUs are also supported, but it is only limited. Vulkan is recommended. Then later also supports online functionality. In order to use it, you are required to dump account files from your own Wii U console. I'll be skipping this part. A complete tutorial has been provided on Samus website. Moving on to the controller support, Nintendo Switch, DualShock 4 and DualSense controllers all have support for motion controls. Using the STL controller API, this will be automatically detected. Previously, SEMU hook was used, it is not required now. I'll be just using my wired Xbox One controller to play the games, it does not support motion controls. Regular buttons work fine. Gamepad touch input can be controlled via left mouse button. Gyro functionality can be controlled via right mouse button. So let me just show you the compatibility list. There you go. I'll just search for Bayonetta part 2. Click on B. Alphabetical order here. There's the game. Here it is marked as perfect. This is the game CMU wiki page. Here the fixed issues have been mentioned. Optimized settings have also been provided. Just to let you know, some information here might be outdated. For example, here it is mentioned, setting GPU buffer cache accuracy to low, fast can improve performance. This setting has been removed from the latest builds. These are the issues that are present in the game. For example, one of the issues being no dynamic shadows. This is the fix for it. Use the shadows fix graphics pack to fix the bug. And this is the same new wiki page for Super Mario Maker. These issues are present in the game. One of them being missing effects. This is the fix. The graphics pack grid fix fixes this issue. Its compatibility is also marked as perfect. Alright, so let's download the build. Click on download latest experimental version. These are the pre-release builds. I'll just download the version 2 build latest. And you can see the change log here. It's a zip file. I have downloaded the archive file. I'll just extract it using Winra. Do not extract it to any folder that requires admin permissions. For example, the program files folder in the C drive. Let me just open the archive file. I need to extract this folder. I won't be using the Windows drive of my PC. In my E drive, I have created a folder and named it as CEMU. I'll extract the contents here. There you go, open it. There's the exe file required to launch them later. But before doing this, need to tweak a few settings. Right click on cmu.exe file and click on properties. Click on compatibility tab. Enable disable full screen optimizations. Then click on change high DPI settings. Check this box, use this setting to fix scaling problems for this program instead of the one in settings. Check this box as well, override high DPS scaling behavior. Click on OK. Click on apply. Now let's start them later. You can create a custom path for the MLC01 folder. It contains all of our saves, installed updates and DLCs. 
if left empty the mlc folder will be created inside the semi folder i'll just leave it blank then we can specify the game path where we have stored our game roms now guys view games are copyrighted legally you are required to dump your own view games in order to play them using this emulator a complete guide has been provided on semu's website i'll give a link to it in the description of this video just for your information you can find these games on the internet downloading them can get you into legal trouble do it at your own risk i won't be providing links to any of these games so let me just click on browse in my d drive i have created a folder and named it as view inside this folder i have placed my game files these are the contents of a game but don't specify this directory specify the directory that has all of your roms let me show you the contents for this game super mario maker it's the same folder structure click on select folder and then click on download community graphic packs as mentioned here graphic packs improve games by offering the possibility to change resolution tweak fps or add other visual or gameplay modifications download the community graphic packs to get started make sure your pc is connected to the internet wait for the download to complete there you go these are the packs that i'll be using i'll cover it in the later part of the video click on next these are some hotkeys and these are additional options automatically check for updates start games with full screen open separate pad screen i'll just enable start games with full screen i can configure the input from here but i'll just do that from the emulator's interface click on close there you go the emulator started it is also showing us both of our games now let me just show you how to install any update or dlc for a game just click on file then click on install game title update or dlc now i don't have any update file let's just assume this is the folder containing the update file all you need to do is go to meta and select the .xml file from here in order to install the update after the update is complete you will see the updated version here let me just open the graphics pack setting as i have checked install games from here it's only showing us the packs for bayonetta 2 and super mario maker let me just uncheck this there you go all games are shown now i'll expand bayonetta part 2 these are the enhancements description has been provided here mods are also available i'll enable this mod 60 fps cut scenes this patches cut scenes to run at 60 fps getting under 60 fps will slow down playback of the cut scene and this is the name of the author workarounds it was mentioned in the wiki page of this game dynamic shadows vulcan workaround for dynamic shadows to prevent them from rendering partially or not at all from here i can tweak the graphic setting resolution default is 720p i'll select full hd resolution shadow quality i'll select high and isotropic filtering i'll select 8x if you have a low end gpu just stick with 720p resolution now let me just tweak the settings for super mario maker there you go full hd resolution mods workarounds i'll just enable both of them so for any particular game this is how we change its resolution apply mods and workarounds now i'll close it let me just show you the general settings i'll leave them here as this language can be tweaked from here default is english for me graphics setting we can change the graphics api from here vulcan is recommended name of your gpu i have disable vsync as i don't observe any screen tearing if you observe any screen tearing i would recommend enabling vsync from nvidia's control panel and the corresponding control panel in the case of radeon gpus here i'll just enable async shader compile 
Due to this setting enabled, stuttering is reduced when the shader cache is compiled when we play the game. These settings here are left as this. I'll use the default audio settings. Make sure an API is selected here. Overlay settings. So I'll just enable these parameters just for the purpose of performance analysis. Position, I'll just select top left. I'll also enable MSI Afterburner software in order to show you all of the performer stats. Completely optional. These are the account settings required for online mode. I'll just skip it. Moving on to the input configuration. The emulator supports both mouse and keyboard. I'll just use my wired Xbox One controller. Here, click on emulated controller. I'll select Wii U gamepad. It works with almost all of the games. Click on controller bar here. Need to select the API. As mentioned earlier, if you want to use the motion controls, select STL controller here. This will work with Switch, DualShock 4 and DualSense controllers. But I am using the Xbox One controller, so I'll just select X input here. This is my controller. It was detected. Click on add. All of the controls were mapped automatically. Let me just move the stick of my controller. Yeah. It is detected. You can manually map the keys as well. It's fairly simple. Just click on any bar here. Then just press any key on your gamepad that you want to assign with the A key. I just press the A key. I'll go back to the B key. We can also create different profiles for the controllers. Just named it as X1. Now if we right click on any game from here, we can access different settings. This will directly open its wiki page. This will open the games directory. This will open its save directory. And these will open the update and DLC directories. We can also access the graphics pack from here. This is the game profile. Under the CPU section, I'm using the auto mode recommended. Multi-core recompiler is usually preferred here. Thread quantum set to 45,000. This is the default value. Graphics, Vulkan. This value is left as this controller. From here, I can select the profiles as you can see. 